important thing to remember, and please hear this. Make sure you guys can hear this and see, all right? The struggle you're going to have is if you start painting now, at any point moving forward, with a lot of water in your brush. Because when you do that, I'll try to show you, you'll go into an area like this, and that water will start to reactivate what's already there. And so essentially, as that dries, your whole area becomes lighter than what it was before, rather than darker, okay? So the strategies you need to be using now, when you load your brush, tap most of the moisture out on the side of the brush. Or, if you're like me and you don't care about your hands getting dirty, when you load your brush, squeeze some of that moisture out. Now, if I use firm pressure, the brush is completely dry. But if I grab some of that and just use a little bit to pull some of that water off, then I'm working with more paint and less water. That's the key, all right? How do we darken this orange even further? More paint. You can add more red, you can add more paint, and you can start to add other colors to your mixture. So with a little water, I'm gonna create a puddle on here that uses yellow and red, and what should I use to darken it? Brown. Brown, why brown? It's neutral and it's warm. So a lot of times people think about shadow values and they think, oh, black, black will make it darker. But black is a color that kind of kills every other color. So if you're going to add a shadow here and make it darker, you need brown to keep it in that warm family like the yellows, oranges, and reds. So this should darken by adding brown. And at this point, you're gonna have to be careful that you don't darken everything. Now we're moving from those big shapes into smaller and smaller shapes. So I may only do the top part of this window. And I may only do like this little trapezoid shape here underneath the window. So it's not everything. And because you have less paint, you want to continue to reload your brush. And you should start to see some of the things that you're seeing in the reference image. Those should start to happen in your painting. So you're, you're slowing things down, using more paint and less water, and you're darkening more select areas, not everything. And then we're going to save our tonal best for last. We can produce something that's kind of like black, or at least super, super dark. But we're going to save that for the very, very end. I just, I don't like that this is, I feel like, really light, so I'm going to darken everything. You guys have to make that decision. Stepping back, squinting at your painting, looking to see if these new washes are separating from your other values. If they're just the same, there's no point doing it. So make sure that as you do it, you start to see the change happening. Okay? Refer pretty frequently to your... Uh, your reference image, but now because we're using plenty of paint and not very much water, you can do um, smaller shapes as well, like you can start putting in these window shapes. And we're not trying to do anything super perfect, we're just going to indicate those, and I'll probably come in here with this and darken everything. But you're making decisions now based on your reference image, you're darkening smaller areas, and you really need to see the difference as you paint. Okay, try that.